Hey, and welcome back to the Open for Business podcast. It's Anthony here, and today, a massive fanboy moment for me. We have the one and only Mr. Chris Cubby Cubbinus on the show. Today, we are going to talk to him about how he's gone from scaling his marketing agency from just himself three years ago to now employing 17 people. We're going to talk to him about why it's important for businesses to be marketing themselves today, when a business should or shouldn't work with an agency, and he also shares with us his number one tip right now for growing your Instagram. I've been super keen to get this one to you guys. Love this interview. Here it is. Mr. Chris Cubby Cubbinus, it's an absolute honor. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, man. I've been looking forward to this for a while. We have, uh, we've, we've known each other for a little while in, uh, in online terms, um, came across each other on social yes. media a couple of years ago now, so we've had a bit of a, an online uh, bromance, you might call it, and um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah, yes. it's yes, awesome sure. to actually finally uh, have you on the show and, uh, and be talking in real life, so I'm super keen for this chat. Yeah, I agree. It's been uh, it's a long overdue. It is, it is, but uh, hey, we're here yeah. now, so... For anybody who uh, hasn't heard of you, mate, um, can you give us like the uh, the couple of minute uh, backstory on yourself, lead into the business that you're running now with uh, with Cub and Co. Yeah, for sure. So um, my name is Chris Cubernus. My friends call me Cubby. I'm you know I'm a marketer at heart, a digital marketer at heart, uh, an entrepreneur. I at very at a very young age knew that I wanted to be in advertising and marketing. I was kind of a weird kid. I, at like 12, I was critiquing ads on television and then print ads. And my parents were like, this is a very strange child we have here, yes. but uh, okay. <laughs> so, so like, you know, at a very young age and, and I knew, so they asked for this job book, this book about a thousand jobs or a hundred jobs in advertising. I don't remember what it was, but it was all about jobs and advertising. And I would, I got the book, they gave it to me and I read it cover to cover and I learned about the whole advertising industry and I was like, this is what I want to do. So mm-hmm. at 14, at 14, I did my first internship at an ad agency, you know, by 16, I was doing graphic design and web design, you know, the, the World Wide web like really kicked in. Um, then it was like the mid nineties and I was, I was, I was hooked. So I started building websites and and I built a little small, you know, small business, me and another guy, just like, you know, freelancing, basically not, I wouldn't call it a, I wouldn't call it like a business business. It was just us sort of goofing around, making a few sites, making a few things here and there for friends yeah. and family. Yeah. And, you know, I, and then I went to university, studied marketing and, and communications. And then, you know, from university, I, you know, I had various different jobs and in, in different marketing roles and, and at an agency and things like that. And, and, you know, um, this was a actually, yeah, what was it in 2009 or 2008, I moved to, yeah, 2008, actually, I moved to Denmark. Big move. So I'm Canadian originally. Yeah, it was a big move. So I'm an immigrant now, as they say, yes. uh, living in some, a foreign country. Uh, I've, my wife is Danish. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's how, you know, that's how I came to Denmark and we have two lovely children. And in 2016, I decided to quit the corporate thing. I wasn't super happy. I was, you know, actually I actually had like a very good job. I would say it's like a high paying, you know, six figure salary, you know, benefits and that whole thing. Like it was very, very cushy. And I was on the road to, you know, what you'd call traditional success and, and everything was good, but I was just happy. You know, I was just like, I had this dying or this sort of like, you know, nagging need to want to do something else, to want to do something you know, that, that I could call my own. Mm. So I started Cub and Co. I kind of put the pieces together. I mean, you know, you know, as being a family man yourself, you know, you can't, and also one of the I was a big provider for the family. You know, you can't just sort of throw caution to the wind. You have to kind of put some pieces in place and mm. and make sure that you can make money and make sure that you can actually support your family. So I was very cautious of that and very like, okay, I need to, 
you know, it was almost like I had to make money. I had to make it a success. If I didn't, then That's we'd wrong. be out on the street. So, yeah, yeah. so, you know, so jumping in and doing my own thing, you know, a lot of people talk about entrepreneurship. Like you got to do that. What That's a young man's game. You got to start that at a young age. You have less responsibilities. You have less. For me, it worked the opposite way. For me, it was like that. There was responsibilities forced me to do things in a certain way. It forced me to make it successful. I had no choice. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, you know, that was great. And, and you know, I started it in January. Like it will come up to the three year anniversary here on January 1st. Cause it started at January 1st, 2016. Yeah. Congratulations. And yeah. So it's, um, it's a good big milestone for us. I mean, you know, a lot of businesses don't succeed. So very happy that we're, doing well we're an advertising digital marketing agency we help clients with you know their social media their social media ads the content video productions campaigns websites uh you know seo sem everything basically under the sun when it comes to digital marketing yeah and we've been we've been super privileged to and lucky to work with some incredible brands and some incredible marketers and and it's really helped us grow. So, you know, in that three year span, we've gone from zero people, me, me only, and now we're 17 people. So, wow. I mean, it's, um, it's going the right way and, and we'll see what next year brings, but, but that's basically where we're at. Mate, there's, there's so many things that I'd love to pick apart in there, but we'd probably need about an hour and a half to, uh, to discuss it all. But, you know, firstly, as you've mentioned, you know, three years in, um, the business is just going from strength to strength. Anybody that follows you online can, can see that. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you. The thing that I did want to ask you about is I know many of the people that listen to this podcast in particular are, you know, they are the small business owner. They are the entrepreneur. They are trying to grow and scale their business and i'm wondering like have you got any any advice or, or any tips for people listening uh, you know about growing and scaling i know it's such a broad topic but what sort of yeah. things could you suggest or what sort of things have worked well for you to obviously go from you know a single solo business owner to thriving business and 17 staff in three right. years yeah okay so there's a few things that i would one thing that I find small business owners fail to do is, is assess the market. Mm -hmm. They don't. And I mean, let's just assume, well, let's not assume they've done that correctly first, because I think a lot of times when I talk to small business people, um, they're like, oh, I can't really scale my business or I can't, you know, I can't figure out. And, and the typical thing that I go through with them is like, have you, have you done the math on, is this, you know, is this a growing field that I'm in? Is this a growing industry? Can I make money? Is, is the market that I'm in actually big enough? Mm. Um, are there people that I can actually sell this service or this product or this whatever to at a decent price and make margin? Because the thing is, is when you want to grow a business, it takes, it takes money. It takes capital. It takes, you know, that you're selling stuff. I mean, obviously you could do it other ways. You could go and get a loan and, and things like that, or go into, you know, yeah. get some finance from a venture capital. And there's, there's lots of ways of getting capital to grow. But, mm. but I think like most small businesses, they just want to sell more at higher rates so that they can make more money so that they can bring on people yeah. and they can scale and they can keep growing it. And I often say, okay, well first do the math, find out, is this scalable? Is this working? And if it's not scalable, then you need to either expand it, to include more services or you need to look at other markets or you need to, to adjust some things. So that's, that's sort of step one. And then assuming that that's done. Yeah. That, I, that's what I find a lot of the times they just mm. haven't done the math and figured out like what to do there. And then, you know, I think what I tip the, the thing is about entrepreneurs really entrepreneurship is really difficult is that I sort of think of it like you're in a gunfight yeah. in some ways you're, you're like, and it's not only that you're in a gunfight, you have one gun, one hand that's to hold the gun and you're bleeding from one arm. Yes. Right. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, yep. Yep. Do you, you know what I mean? It's a good analogy because it's like, or a good metaphor because like, do you stop shooting to tend to the arm or do you keep shooting and then hopefully you can tend to the arm after you're out of the gunfight, right? Like mm. that's basically entrepreneurship. So 
and that's really hard. So I've I've been successful in scaling the business because I don't I, I tend to I tend to ignore the bleeding arm. Yes. Meaning that you know what I mean? Like I tend to say, okay, I just need to make sure I get the next sale or the next like there's there's always gonna be mess, problems, like, isn't there? There's always gonna be issues always, and fires yes. and yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's always gonna be those things. And the thing is is that you're able to solve them down the road. And I think a lot of people who don't scale their businesses, they, they focus in on the, they focus on the bleeding arm first. Mm. Yeah. And, and not necessarily on continuing to shoot the gun. Yes. And, and I would say like, you have to, what's been successful for me is that I just keep shooting the gun. Meaning like, even if, you know what I mean? Like I always say yes to projects. Like we were laughing last week because it's one week to Christmas and, and I said yes to a project with one week left to Christmas <laughs> and the client, the client needed it like that week. And it was like, it was going to take, and people were like, what are you crazy? We can't do this. Like there's yeah. no way. And I'm like, that's me, man. I'm going to keep firing the gun because I know that it's going to fuck up our process. Oh, excuse mm. me for the language. Sorry. Oh, good. I don't know if you can bleep that out. That's all, um, no bleeping necessary. I know it's going <laughs> to screw up our process. I know it's going to, you know, throw things in disarray, but it's super vital that we don't let off that, that gun because that's where growth comes from. And if Cub and Co growth. doesn't fire the gun, they're going to go and find someone who will. Exactly. And, and, and the thing is, is that, and then after, you know, it's funny in, 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 in peace times when, you know, you don't have to fire the gun, that's when you can do some triage and figure out how to fix that arm. Yeah. And, you know, and, and did you actually even need that arm in the first place? And, you know what I mean? So I think like there's a lot of, a lot of business owners that don't do that. They don't realize that, okay, there's a pipeline here and we need to continue to fill the pipeline. It gets, it's worse to have an empty pipeline because if you're just sitting around fixing broken arms, yes, then it's, that's not a business. That's, that's something else. That's right. Um, you just, you're just managing yeah, so, things and not uh, and not making sales, not actually doing business, not actually growing the business. So mm. I would say like that's where my two advices sort of lies. That I love you know, that. Make sure that you have that going. I love that. That's awesome. Awesome analogy. And speaking of you know small business owners, where. Where do you see most people when it comes to marketing? Obviously, like, you know, you're in the business of marketing. I'm in the business of marketing. How important is marketing in that growing and, and scaling of business? And, you know, do people pay it enough attention in your eyes? Uh, well, it depends on what you consider as marketing. I guess that's like the, the, the caveat here is that, mm. I mean, I think that people can't buy from you if they don't know who you are. True. That's like one of the main axioms here is that if they can't, like we have this issue right now, like as a, as a young agency in Copenhagen, I mean, we're one of a thousand agencies, Yeah. maybe more, maybe 5,000 agencies, maybe 10,000 agencies. Like, mm. so, you know, and, and the thing is, is like, we're not new. We're not the first. We're not, you know what I mean? There's tons of other players yeah. out there yeah. so and it's probably the same for most small businesses it's like so so you have to think about like how do we stand out and how do we get those customers and steal those customers from other other brands that that, that might have you know the attention right now and that's that's key and i i do say steal because some business owners don't understand that you're taking sometimes you have to take business away from another service provider yes like most of the time another yeah it's competition like so you have to think about okay how do we be how are we better or how do we look better or how do we communicate better how do we market ourselves better mm. so that these guys choose us uh for these projects instead of um our competitors and and that marketing side is super vital i mean i've i think where we've done it differently or where I think, you know, which will change soon here, but where we've done it differently is like a lot of my personal brand is what brings in customers here. Yep. Yep. Um, so I've been very aware of this mm -hmm. and 
So that's also a thing. Like, it's not just about marketing your company. It's also marketing yourselves, right? It's also marketing your people and marketing. Yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you have to think of that as well. And a lot of times you can go farther with marketing yourself because people want to do business with people. Yeah. And, and that, and also when I looked at the marketplace, I thought, okay, I look at all these agencies, none of their leadership is visible as a personal brand. <laughs> yeah. It's visible at yeah. all. Yeah. Right. So it was like, okay, here's a door or here's a window for me to go through that would separate us from the rest. Big point of difference. Would, would, would allow us to maybe do things in a different way. Mm-hmm. And, and I've used that. And I think a lot of brands would actually get a real benefit from thinking about it in those terms. Yeah. Um, and, and we're seeing that across as a big macro trend where, you know, like Kylie Jenner with her makeup brand or, yeah, or exactly. things like that, where, you know, the personality is actually mm. the one thing that's driving the, the growth. Mm. And it's something so, that I'm always talking to, you know, my clients about as well in that, you know, if you're operating in a business that, you know, does have a lot of competition, you know, whether it's an accounting firm or hairdressers or, you know, whatever it might be when there's lots of competition around, when you're selling, like when you're comparing service for service, oftentimes, you know, they're so similar that, you know, there's, right. there's not much for the consumer to, to choose between. Like it's, it's the service as it is. But, you know, your point of difference and where you can stand out and where you can get more market share is, is when you do focus on, you know, creating either a brand around your product or service because hairdressing is hairdressing, but if you can build your own unique brand into it, then you have you know a point of difference. You have you know a different set of values. People can connect with it more. Or like yes. you've mentioned, you know you've used your own personal brand as the you know the company founder, the company CEO. You know you're out there, you're visible. People can get to know you before they even think about working with you. And then you know that's yes. that's your point of difference. So I think. You know, yes. people don't give brand enough um, enough attention these days, especially in that small business where, you know, and, and it can be tricky. Like, it's not easy for, for a lot of people to, you know, get in front of the camera or, you know, put themselves out there on social media. But it is where, you know, there is so much opportunity. So, it's definitely something to think yeah. about. Yeah, and it feels less like advertising. I mean, that'll exactly. change. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Like, this is, we're seeing effects of it now where, People are, you know, everybody's becoming a marketer in some ways and they're all, you know, trying to sell themselves and personal brand. It's like the Mm, age of personal mm. brand right now. Yeah. So we will go through a change of where that's, that's a little like, um, cliche or that's a little like, oh man, another, another Another one. one, Yeah. But, (laughs) but for now it's very, it's very still open. And I think that's, uh, that's something a lot of, it gives a human face to it. I mean, we're going through this humanization of brands. Mm. And I think that's part of the macro trend here that, that if you use your face or your personality in your, your marketing, it's going better. It's cause, cause it's that human touch that people want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I agree. So I really recommend going for that. That's and marketing, like to your point, it's just, I think marketing is so is sometimes underrated. And I think we have so much power today to market like it's so incredible with facebook ads or any kind of advertising platform or any channel i mean we're living in the age of marketing where anybody can really do it you can get any skill that you want in marketing and and go learn it you can you can hire you know there's tons of small agencies that are fantastic at what they do and i mean there's no excuse for it anymore yeah bad marketing there's no excuse for it you could get away with it i think you know, early, you know, before pre nineties, yep. a lot of small businesses, but you know, you have to stay relevant. And if you don't, there's so much more competition. You're just going to get crushed. What, why should people work with an agency? Is there a reason for, you know, yeah, the types of businesses that should always work with an agency or, you know, do you have any suggestions on when you should work with an agency or if you're thinking about it, what are your, what are your thoughts as an agency owner? I think that there's, I mean, it just all depends on the business and the business model. But I think, I think agencies can uh, and can add and add a different perspective and a, and, a, and a maybe more cutting edge perspective. Yeah. Because we're dealing with multiple clients in in multiple ways. Mm-hmm. We're getting the education and the 
and the um, experience much quicker than you would say like for an internal team. Yes. Because an internal team is, and an internal team is often bogged down by polit- politics and processes. Mm. Whereas an agency, and an agency you can blame also. It's very hard to blame people internally. Yes. And, and most companies don't want to blame things internally because it kind of creates a different environment. So I've noticed that there's like a little tendency to, 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 to let the, some of the small things go. Whereas for an agency, when you use an agency, you can just like literally be like, guys, this is, this is not cutting it. Like this is, it needs to be better. Right. So there's, I feel like there's sometimes a little bit more accountability and a more, um, more attention to getting things a hundred percent correctly. Yeah. Uh, if you have an agency, right. So, and, and and that just makes it easy also for companies to, to, to fire and say, you know, Hey guys, Mr. You know, so-and-so agency or Mrs. So-and-so agency. Yeah. It's not cutting it. Right. And then yeah. you can move on yeah. and go try somebody else. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what I would recommend if somebody like wants to try an agency is that, you know, you have the benefit of being able to get rid of them if they suck. Yes. Employees are not that is yeah. employees might be a bit of a different situation, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. Good advice, mate. Um, changing tact a little bit here. Mm-hmm. What do you, What are your thoughts on you know the uh, the age old work life balance situation? Because um, you know, I know you're a family man. A lot of people that follow you know that you're a family man. Um, but you're also, you know, spending crazy hours building this incredible business. How yeah. do you, how do you go about that? You know, is there such a thing as work life balance in your opinion? I think there is such a thing. I am horrible at it. I do. I am. I am not good at it. My wife laughs at me when I call myself a family man because <laughs> she's like. <laughs> She's like, I think you want to be a family man, but I think like what ends up happening is something else. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. At least but she's laughing about the, it. <laughs> yeah, at least she's. Oh, I don't know if she's laughing. She laughs sometimes about it. Other yeah. times she's pissed about it. But <laughs> the thing is, is that you know, I think for some people, yes, there is work life balance, and I want that for people too. Like when yeah. I look at my employees, and I like, you know, I'm looking out of my glass cage here. I, I want that for them. Because yeah. I believe that there's a there's happier life. What I've chosen is is something that makes me happy. I love working. I love it. I love the, the thrill of it. I love the feeling of it. Um, I'm excited to get to work every day. Uh, but that's been the way it's been most of my life, even when I was working for other people. Yeah. So it's never been like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's who I am. That's right. You know what I mean? And, and so... But I don't recommend this for people because it's it, it can cause serious social social problems. Like yeah. most yep. of the time when I'm out with people having it, trying to have a good time, like I'm thinking about work and that's a problem. Mm. Like it's very hard to turn it off and, and have that balance and be like, you know, here we go. Now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go watch a baseball game. Or I'm going to go, you know, have some fun with some friends. Like it's, yeah, it's. Or family, like, okay, I'm going to go, you know, we're going to go spend a Saturday together. Like, my yeah. mind is always on what's next and what are we doing here and what are we doing there. And that's that might be the plight of being an entrepreneur that you have so many fires that you need to put out. So you can't just put down, you know, you, the hose you, and go home. And You don't get you know to clock I mean? off but, at 5 o'clock and, yeah. No, exactly, right? It's it's always in your mind and you're thinking, okay, should how are we going to make payroll next month and mm. you know what about this employee and oh we're missing this kind of skills on the team and we need this and we need that and yeah. i mean it's just a constant barrage of, of challenges right so mm-hmm. so i think i think for me i, I think that work-life balance exists and i think many people do that and achieve that and many people who who are successful have achieved that like i, I did a um, instagram story the other day that they people paint stuff too much in black and white. There's so many gray zone between, you know, what is successful and what is happy and what is work and what is life and, and all of these things. And, and we tend to try to paint things in black and white when really there's just so much gray zone. Yeah. So I, I really believe that there is work life balance, but it's individual. It's it, there's no like ratio. There's no like, Oh, every time someone clocks off at five, 
you know, and goes home, that's work life balance. No, who knows what they're doing in work in yeah. their life? Like, yeah, who knows? Exactly. Like, they might not be hanging out with their kids. They might be playing, mm. you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, or they might be like, who, like, who knows yeah, what they're doing, yeah, right? So, exactly. So, the, I, I don't, I try not to, to think like these things. I, th- I try to think of in terms of, you know, are they meeting their obligations and are they meeting their responsibilities and, and do they have a life that they've built that they're proud of and happy of? Yeah. Um, on the most part, because it's not always going to be like, oh, I'm 100% happy with all my entire life. No, exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> nobody is. Nobody Everyone's is. stuff to work on, right? Yeah. Um, and I think if we treat each other and treat ourselves better in this light and understand that there's this, this gray zone, yeah. um, all of us, all of us would get along and be a little bit more happy. I, oh, I love that. I love that, mate. mate. I am, I am conscious of time. So, final question: Do you, mm-hmm. do you have a? And you know, I won't be forgiven if I don't ask this. But do you have a top social media tip, trick, or hack that you can share with us right now? Platform of your choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> platform of my choice okay here's the i'm gonna take take instagram because i'm uh, i'm focused on instagram at the moment my top tip for you is focus all your efforts on your caption nice focus Re- everything being? you can on because i'm noticing a trend that is if you if you have great tips or if you write a good story or if you really provide a a massive amount of value and information and emotion or whatever it is in your caption, the photo doesn't, the photo needs to be nice, of course, Mm. but, and it should be related to your caption in some way. But if you, if you spend the time in your caption and really, really flesh that out and make that great, you will get more attention, more reach and more engagement. So on the, Instagram, the caption really is, uh, you know, becoming the substance behind the post. Yes, because the thing is, is that we've kind of like Instagram was all visual, right? Mm, yep. It was, it was that, but but now I think we're we're getting and people will. You have to sort of train your audience to like, oh, now I'm going to get instead of you want to train your audience to stop scrolling. Yes, that's basically what you want to do. So. If you have great captions that are chock full of value, people will it actually doesn't matter have to what stop the photo to consume is. it. Yeah, people will yeah. actually have to stop. They they want you want to build an addiction to your content. Mm. So, and that's not that's not enough for it to be visual because visual you can consume visuals in a split second. Yeah, you cannot consume text in a split second. So true. So. I would say like that's my number one hack right now on Instagram is just all in on the caption. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. That's awesome. And I, I love it, man. you do some of that too. I think I've of noticed course. you doing some of that as well. Of course. Yeah. Like it's, um, yeah, just, just naturally wanting to try and, you know, you, you can't fit a thousand characters into an image, but you can put it in your, uh, your caption. So it's, yeah. Where the where the value is in my eyes, so yeah, totally agree, mate. Thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. It was You're super pre- welcome. It was a uh, definitely a bit of a, a fanboy episode for me, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> me very, as well. Me as well. Very very stoked to uh, to have you on the show, and can't wait to uh, to get this episode out to everybody. So thank you so much for your time. If people want to know uh, where they can find you, mate, find out more about you, where do they go? Yes. They can go anywhere on social media. My username on most places is Chris Cubby, you know, C-H-R-I-S-K-U-B-B-Y. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, wherever. Uh, Twitter, hit me up on Twitter. It's probably the best place to like get my attention right now. But Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and just say hi. Whoever's listening, let me know you heard this. Um, Drop by one of my socials and say, hey, I heard this. uh, on Anthony's podcast and I'll um I'll say hi back and and then we can get uh get being social. That's it. That's the name of the game, mate. Thank you so much, yes. mate. Hopefully we can get you back on the show Cheers. one day. I hope so. And uh have a fantastic uh fantastic Christmas in 2019. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you. Um looking forward to seeing what you what you come up with for 2019, man. I'm always uh super interested in what you're up to, so there's a lot in the pipeline. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love it. That's-
That's great. All right. Cool. Thanks, mate. So that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you love the show, the greatest form of feedback you can give is to leave a review. It helps the show grow. It helps more people find it. And I would really appreciate that. Head over to anthonygmurphy.com where you'll find all the show notes and links for today's episode. And if you just want to stay up to date with me and see what I'm up to, head over to Instagram, anthonygmurphy, and say g'day. And I will talk to you in the next episode.